welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear. And I am a reader and a writer. So I had a space heater on in the background and realized it was making lots of noise. So hopefully no noise will be in this one. At least not for the space heater. And welcome back to week six wrap up. Pretty sure it's week six. Jumping right on in with what I read this week. I finished Blue Period Volume 2. This is a manga that came onto my radar due to the Manga Host Club. Uh, they are a group of booktubers who read three volumes of a popular manga and then one volume of a less well-known manga. And this was their popular manga, I think for October, October, November time period. But my library only had one or no, my library didn't have any of them actually. And it took a while for that one to come in. And I just recently got two. So I picked it up. Really love this series. This is about a young man who is just kind of listless going through school. Not sure really what he wants to do. He gets good grades, you know, nice enough person but he doesn't have an actual drive. And then he starts making art through his art elective class, realizing he really does enjoy this and it is stretching him and he's growing and it's it's a challenge for him and he's developed, he's developed a passion for it. And this one, we're following him some more as he's going to prep school and for, for the art and preparing for the following year to apply for university. In this we also see him talking with his parents about his desire to go to art school. That was just a, it was a really great conversation between him and his mom. And the way that they connected, because it was very real. <laughs> it, there were no eloquent words saying, this is why I want to go to art school. He showed how art has changed his perception and view of the world and how it's changing him as a person. And that helped his mom go, okay, if this is what you want to strive for, okay. Really enjoyed this. If you like manga, you should check out this series. And then funny story, my library had decided to buy volumes three and four. Volume four has come in. Volume three has not yet. And I know this because I put a hold on both of them. So yes, I will go pick up volume four, but I can't read it till I get volume three. All right, so then next I DNF'd. You were made for this. Upon starting reading it, the writing is beautiful. It's actually written in an interesting style where each POV perspective is written in first person and there's no dialogue tags. So it's not the typical style, which is why I consider it more of a literary story. And I was interested, kind of figuring out what's going on. It's about a man and a woman, Sam and Mary, who Sam had inherited a house in Sweden and they decided to go move there. And they're just going through their day and they've simplified their lives. And it was interesting, but you could feel like something was off. Like they were just putting on a, a good face, even in their own heads, You, they refused to come to terms with how they are feeling, which, okay, fine. That's interesting. And at first I thought there was going to be like a speculative element to it because at the beginning of the book, uh, it has a quote from Din Hamid Troll. Here. So as this is talking about a troll, I thought that there was going to be a speculative element and I didn't get that far to even find out, honestly. It got to the point where I noticed that in Mary's point of view, because they have a child, she always refers to the baby, the baby, the baby. And then Sam uses Connor, the baby's name. And I'm like, okay, there's some element with 
mom not finding, not feeling like the baby is hers. Okay. And this is where I was thinking, oh, a speculative element, perhaps. Maybe the baby's a changeling and mom realizes it, but doesn't know what to do. And no, it ends up mom has postpartum depression and it's not being treated for it. And yeah, I'm, I'm not into that. So I kind of flipped through some of the rest of the book and found that, uh, yeah, they just never address their issues. So not interested in this at all. So I'm DNFing it and I will be unhauling it. On happier news, I have continued to make progress in Abaddon's Gate. I am about, I'm a little over halfway, because that's the front. So I'm a little over halfway through. I had a little bit of a rocky start with this one, at least for the first fourth of the book. It felt like they were establishing the world and everything, or establishing characters. And it was a little much, considering this is the third book in the series. And so it was just very slow getting into this book. And I'm not a fan of the villain's point of view. Just why does it need to be there? But some more elements of it have caught my interest. And I am reading this a lot faster now. So I hope to finish this, if not this weekend, at the beginning of next week. And, you know, maybe my mood this week was more bouncing off of things and you know, not really connecting. Maybe I was having a mini reading slump. I don't know. But I read the first chapter of Nikki Drayden's Escaping Exodus and I bounced off of it. Now, I'm not DNFing this book, but I am going to step away from a week. And that's just because when I read the first chapter, it, it struck me as a young adult and I thought this was an adult novel. And so... The main character was really irritating, but so I need to co I need to step back, reframe my mind before coming back to this book. Otherwise, I'm just gonna hate the main character or one of the main characters because it looks like it's a dual perspective from the index. I'm just gonna really hate her and not want to read the book at all. But for some reason, if I'm like, okay, no, this is coded young adult, it's a little bit easier for me. It's just, man, that the first chapter for me was very messy. I don't like how they introduced us to the characters or the world setting. Well, so I, I guess I should back up. I liked how they introduced us to Seski and Adela. That was interesting. And bringing on Wyatt the way they did, okay. But when they met her mom and her sister Ken, that's where I'm like, it's feeling forced. Uh, I feel more like I'm getting a whole bunch of info dump and how Suski's reacting was very much like a teenager or a child. I mean, really more like a child because she was thrown a temper tantrum and that is something that um, while teenagers, yes, do it, it's more of a characteristic of a younger child. So I need to take a break from the or from trying to read this. And so... I picked up Mercedes Lackey, The Serpent Shadow. This is her elemental series. So each of the, each of these are based off of, loosely off of a fairy tale. And they have different elements of magic in them. And I haven't gotten too far into this, but it was a good palate cleanser from Escaping Exodus, which then allowed me to continue reading Abaddon's Gate a lot easier. So I'll Probably once Abaddon's Gate is done, I will jump into this more full force. And then the other book I want to focus on this next week is Forging the Nightmare, which is another one of my... Oh, wow. <laughs> that one has a very shiny title. You can see everything I have on my screen. So the other one I want to work on reading this week is Forging a Nightmare by Patricia Jackson. This is another book that fits one of my Blackathon 2022 prompts. So I'm just going from the group book to trying out another one. And from what I've read, this is more of a paranormal urban fantasy. So it's even then a little bit more of a palate cleanser from science fiction. And for my writing wrap up, I did not actually write this week. You know, again, I had still in my mind given me through the end of 
February, which is perfect because in March they have the Worldwide Writing Thon dates have been announced. So if you are a writer or you were, you're interested in writing, this is a write a thon where they have streams for 24 hours and people host all over the world for this. And you just you get you get to come together for different author communities, talk with them. They have a couple info streams where it's just talking about ideas about writing and then mo the majority of the streams are they do writing sprints so you can be writing at the same time as other people and it's a lot of fun and it's put on by Jessica Williams and Samantha Nassett and I'll link both of their channels down below as well as a worldwide write-a-thon channel because they have a specific one for that as well down below and for other media I've been catching up on podcasts from I Should Be Writing by Mer Lafferty where she's just talking about a working writer's life. She streams the podcasts on Twitch and I listen to them about a week later when they come up in the RSS feed. And she just does a like little segments of, do we have too much product productivity? Or why are we comparing ourselves to other people? And she, you know, she'll talk about the business of being a writer, how sometimes other things come into play. And I just really enjoy listening to her. She is one of the few podcasts where I can just listen to one after another after another, just because I, the sound of her voice is very soothing for me. Also, I have begun my rewatch of The Great British Baking Show. I like to do that every year because I call it kind of my happy show. It makes me excited then to go into the kitchen and cook or bake. And it's just a nice uplift when I'm feeling tired or sad. That has been my week six wrap up for books and other media. How was your week six?